Hello, I'm Laura Lewis. Welcome to the class on the solar system or our solar system. This is part of GCSE Physics. Okay, so learning objectives. So this is um, a description of all the bodies that make up our solar system. So things like planets, comets, asteroids, we'll go into more detail later. A discussion of what makes a planet a planet and analysis of the sun as a star and an overview of how it emits light via nuclear fusion. So we've got a few other things in here as well. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at um, sort of previous models of the solar system. Um, you get answered this a lot on exams, so I put this in here as well. Um, bit of a bonus, a bonus thing to talk about. So um, these define two words. So geocentric is the idea that the sun, moon, and planets all rotate around the Earth. So people used to believe that one. We used to think that was the right thing. Heliocentric, the word helios for sun, the word geo means Earth. The heliocentric for sun, so the idea that the Earth and the other planets orbit the sun. Okay, so obviously that's the one we know now. So a geocentric model. Okay, so people a long time ago thought that everything rotated around the Earth. And you can kind of see why they thought that, can't you? By looking into the sky, okay, is that it looks like the sun moves, isn't it? Or you think about the moon as well. It looks like the sun and the moon move and the Earth doesn't move, okay? So, so, the sun, so the sun moves and the Earth doesn't. Um, that's what it looks like. Okay, so that's what they thought. Um, there's a, a, a scientist called Galileo. Okay, he wasn't. He didn't invent the telescope, so that was not the great. So he was the first person to use the telescope to look at Jupiter um, and sort of that celestial object, I think, in the sky at night. So he used a telescope to look at Jupiter. So Jupiter. Um, when it's in the sky, it looks like, a, looks like just to our eyes, it looks like a bright star. So people didn't really um, know what it was, that they knew it moved, okay, month to month. So example that it's not in the sky at the moment, but in uh, the summer, it'll be back again. Okay, because yeah, because it moves, it's a planet, and we're back in our skies again. Um, and he looked at Jupiter, so that main one, he did his drawings. So this is the main, uh, the main, this is Jupiter in the middle, the brightest one. And he saw what looked like to him stars that moved around from night to night. So that's what he saw, okay? Because his telescope wasn't that powerful, um, not as powerful as ones we have today, okay? But he saw that it moved from night to night. So he kept observing. And the four moons, now known as the Galilean moons, named after him, uh, he discovered them. They, yeah, they moved from night to night, okay? And so this meant the moons were orbiting Jupiter. Okay, this was quite a fundamental thing because it meant that they weren't orbiting the Earth. So there was there was a first sort of observation, first thing someone saw that that because other people had ideas before this point, but they hadn't seen that there was um, other celestial objects orbiting other things. Okay, so a really common question. I'm just going to um, put escape so we can write in the a box here. So this is a really common question in GCSE papers. I've put this in here because it's so common. Okay, so, so how do Galileo's observations disprove the, the geocentric model, okay, so the Earth-centered model, but do not completely explain the heliocentric model? Okay, so let's think about that. So let's write that. So this is usually a six mark question. So Galileo observed, we saw, the moons of Jupiter through his telescope. Okay. And through his telescope. He saw the moons moving from night to night. Obviously, you can only see it at night time. <laughs> they do move in the day, you just can't see them because the sun's too bright. <laughs> moving from night to night, okay? This meant that the moons were orbiting um, Jupiter and were not orbiting the Earth. Okay, and just want to make sure we get those marks. So geocentric model, even though you might think it's obvious, you have to write this down. The geocentric model states that the um, that the planets 
sun and moon and stars actually um and the stars they believe everything orbited the earth galileo's observations this proved this okay galileo's um observations did not um, prove the um, heliocentric model completely. Okay. As this observation did not prove by itself that the uh, the Earth and the other planets orbit the Sun. Okay, so yeah, it proved it just proved one, but it didn't completely prove the other. Okay, but it was on the way to obviously proving it. Okay, so we're going to look at the central part of our solar system first. So we're going to look at parts of the solar system. So the Sun. Okay, so the Sun is a star. Um, same sort of thing as what you see in the sky at night. Obviously, they're just very far away, and the sun is close. So, if you because um, I took my telescope out um, a few nights ago, and if you're lucky enough to have a telescope or access, look through one, you, you just see so many more stars. I mean, I hadn't used one for a while, a telescope, um, and you just see so many more stars with your eyes. There's so many stars, but the sun, yeah, it's just a star, but it's nearby. So, um, it's mainly made of hydrogen helium, so light gases. Um, and it's much bigger than all the planets combined. It's just it's just much, much bigger than them. So that's the scale picture there. It's just much, much bigger. So obviously the sun's important to us because it provides all the light and heat for the Earth. Obviously, when there's a sun, it'd just be complete darkness and the Earth would freeze over. Okay, and it and it actually creates this light and its heat for a process called nuclear fusion. So it's here, so nuclear fusion. So there's two isotopes. I've just made a video earlier about isotopes. There's two isotopes of hydrogen. This is funny, I talked about it today. Two isotopes of hydrogen stick together or fuse to form helium energy in the form of light, okay, mainly, so photons, and a neutron. Okay, this is nuclear fusion. What happens? So this goes on in the sun, okay? We don't need to know um, that much more for the solar system, but it's nuclear fusion, so the sun's... Uh, it's called what's known as plasma. So it's really, really, really hot gas, which where the um, electrons have are not orbiting well. They're not orbiting the um, nuclei anymore because it's too hot. The electrons have too much energy. Okay, so let's look. So we've got the sun, the center of the solar system. What makes up the rest? So if we've got the sun, we've got eight planets. Remember, Pluto is not a planet. Uh, moons that orbit the planets. So to be a moon, you have to orbit orbit a planet. Dwarf planets such as Pluto, asteroids, and comets. Okay, so to make, um, I'll go into more detail later, but to be a planet, there's a few rules to be a planet. You have to be big enough to be round, to form a sphere, um, and you have to have cleared your orbit. Okay, so you have to orbit on your own. Okay, you can't orbit with other objects that are similar size to you. So example, Pluto, was um yeah was demoted because it orbits with lots of other bodies we'll talk about a bit later that are very similar in size to it okay so that's what we've made it the, we've made the rules a bit clearer so we've got mercury okay so it's the nearest planet to the sun it's not the hottest and you'll find out so um he whizzes around the sun 88 days okay 88 days around the sun okay uh, but it rotates very slowly it's got it's called a two Two thirds locked orbit. Okay, so um, they're on the day side of Mercury. Yeah, temperatures can reach 430 degrees, but at night it drops to 180. It doesn't really have an atmosphere to speak of. Um, it, it's actually got something called an exosphere, <laughs> which is uh, like a really thin atmosphere, not really yet, yeah, not an atmosphere. Um, it's much smaller than the Earth, as you can see by this, this, this uh, photo comparison. Okay, so it's two photos there combined. Okay, Venus, actually the closest planet to Earth. Okay, we've got a quiz question. Venus is the closest planet to Earth and nearest in size. 
So the hottest planet in the solar system, uh, 465 degrees, it's hot enough to melt lead on its surface. Also, it's, um, it's, its atmosphere is so hot that it's made of sulfur dioxide um, and carbon dioxide, and that actually keeps heat in. It's like, a, it's like a runaway greenhouse effect. So it's actually the hottest planet in the solar system is Venus, a similar size to Earth. Okay, we've got Earth. We know, um, you know the Earth quite well, don't we? Uh, so yeah, the average temperature over the whole planet is 15 degrees. So it's quite nice, really, for us. It's, it's a lar the largest moon compared to the planet. So we've got something, go we've got some uh, stats going for us. And it's the only planet known to have life on it. It's the only so, that we know of. And then Mars, um, at the uh, time of this video, that the Mars Perseverance rovers landed um, only a few days before. We've got a new space probe on Mars. People have, um, are interested in it because it's got um, ice caps, that there could be some liquid water and it could have had life in it at some point. Um, it's got two small moons <laughs> named Phobos and Deimos, which means fear and panic in Greek. OK, but yeah, many missions have gone to its surface. It's got it's got a few statistics going for it. its biggest canyon in the solar system. Is this one here, the Valles Marinaris, as long as the whole of the United States and has the tallest volcano in the solar system. Olympus Mons at 21, it means Mount Olympus, uh, tw uh, 21 kilometers, 2.5 uh, times taller than Mount Everest. So it's got that. OK, Mars is also, yeah, it might be just, you might get questions saying, why why is a lot of rovers to Mars? So it's got lots, it's got polar ice caps and kind of liquid water. Um, and some has been found, liquid water in the spring when it melts. Okay, so Jupiter, largest of all the planets. It's actually the shortest day, it's the fastest spinning planet, only 12 hours to rotate once. Over 50 moons at the current count, more discovered all the time. As I said, that is the current high riding. The four main moons, one go to Leosaur. Okay, first, um, yeah, so we've got um, Io, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. And you've got the Great Red Spot. So you've got lots of things it's Jupiter's famous for. Um, it's a storm that's lasted over 300 years. So we got Galileo saw it. Okay, in the 16, is it 1610, isn't it? He saw it. And it's, so it's been going longer than that now. Okay, so it's been going a long time. Okay, so um, mostly made of gas. So imagine you had a hydrogen helium a bit like the sun, but it's got a rocky core. So it's got there's a core underneath that. So you would fall through the atmosphere first of all, but you hit something. If you manage to survive that long, obviously it would crush you. Okay, Saturn, very, very beautiful planet. So I've got the um the Earth in, next to it and all these photos. That's why I've got funny photos. So second largest in the in the solar system after Jupiter. So yeah, it's a beautiful, um, beautiful um ring system. So ice and rock particles, the rings um, are not solid and likely the remains of a moon that has broken up, okay? Has over 30 moons, including Titan, Iapetus and Hyperion. There's got lots of moons as well. Um, and the very cute uh, fact is that there's moons that orbit with, between the rings, they're called shepherd moons that keep the rings in their shape. Um, yeah, we have to do sort of thing to realize about this is that the rings are not solid. So they're made of tiny, tiny particles that all orbit the planet. You can even remember like tiny, tiny moons that all orbit the planet. And they're actually, they might not be permanent. Okay, so in a few million years time, I mean, past our lifetimes, a few million years time, these could sort of clump together again to form another moon because they probably were a moon in the first place and they'll clump together to form another moon. That's quite interesting. Uh, Uranus or Uranus, how you pronounce it? I think it's actually, really, I think it's supposed to be pronounced Uranus, okay, because it's known after the... Um, as a god, but um, this one always fascinates me because it's such an odd planet, but it's very interesting. So it orbits us on its side. So the rings are actually top and bottom of it, not the side like Saturn's. It orbits on its side. Um, yeah, it's got a ring system. It's smaller than the Saturn, but it's still quite, it's still quite pretty. So uh, yeah, 42 years to orbit the sun. Okay, so we're getting, we're getting sort of serious statistics here. Um, it's a nice colour. Okay, it's a bit <laughs> It's a bit subjective, isn't it? It's quite it's like a turquoise, quite an aesthetic looking planet. Actually, it's in the sky at the moment. Um, so is Mars. It's actually quite near Mars at the moment. And it's like a turquoise star. I think it's, you can't really see your eyes, but for a telescope, it looks like a turquoise star. So far away, but yeah, it's got a very distinctive colour to it. Okay, it's mainly made of methane. Okay, so it's known as a gas giant. Okay, and it's got this moon called Miranda, which does look like this. It's not photoshopped. 
It looks like it was um, smashed apart and it pulled itself back together again. Okay, it pulled itself back together again um, to form this sort of odd looking moon. But I think it's my favorite in the solar system just because it's so odd. Okay. <laughs> and we have um, Neptune. So, sort of the, the, yeah, the furthest planet from the sun. It's a lot further out. So it takes 165 Earth years to orbit the sun. So no human has ever lived one Neptunian year. Okay, it's the coldest planet, as you probably expect, being so far away, and minus 200 degrees. And also the windiest planet in the solar system. So it's all these, this whips around the, the storm here, whips around so the, the blue spot, if you call it, whips around the planet really, really, really quickly. 14 known moons, so they could have more, we don't know about include Triton, the coldest moon <laughs> in the solar system, but a nice, nice dark blue colour, very quite, quite hard to see to scope Neptune, that's what I discovered last. Okay, so dwarf planets. So Pluto, Eris, 2007, 2007 OR10, Haumea and Marco Marco, sorry if I have mispronounced those, is that these are now being um, named dwarf planets because they all orbit something called the Kuiper Belt. There's a belt, so it's lots and lots of um, small dwarf planets orbiting together. Um, yeah, because there must have a sphere and cleared its own orbit. You've got dwarf planets, so that's the definition you need to know. It's to form a sphere and have cleared its own orbit, like I said before. Other objects, asteroids. Okay, there's an asteroid belt. There's lots of asteroids. And some of these you can see actually this look like stars in the sky. The asteroid belt is found between Mars and Jupiter. So it could have been a planet at one point that got destroyed, okay? So irregular, so yeah, they're not always round, okay? So um, Ceres is, could be a dwarf planet. Sometimes it's called a dwarf planet, but it's part of the asteroid belt. Um, yeah, the irregular rocky bodies called asteroids, okay? Um, they mainly stay in their, their belt. They orbit the sun like that. Um, okay, so asteroids orbit the sun, okay? Asteroids, and they're irregular. Then we've got comets. Okay, comets. So I think they're quite glamorous objects um, because they're sort of like they're quite spectacular, aren't they? When it comes to the sky, comet. Okay, comets are made of ice and rock. They have very large elliptical orbits. So elliptical means it's not circular. Okay, and it's an, they often take millions, often take many years, not millions. Some of them do, but they take many years. So it could be eighty-four years, hundreds of years, thousands of years to orbit the sun. Okay, they come from a belt um, of a belt of, of cometary orbits out, out even outside the orbit of Neptune called the Oort cloud. Okay, so comets gain their tail when they actually come near the sun. So the tail always point, points away from the sun. Okay, so it comes in, it points away, and it's going away, it's still pointing away because the sun actually heats up the ice on the comet and it creates sort of um, an eye, um, like a water vapor and other gases trail behind it. Okay, so um, comets, yeah, they're visitors. The, um, the full name of comet is Stella Cometa, which means hairy star. Okay, <laughs> it's like it's got kind of hair. <laughs> okay, so you may be uh, presented with this type of graph, so it's table in your exams, okay, and you'll have to get information from it. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we've got some questions. So which planet is the hottest? Why is this? And is it what you expect so in practice? So I've got temperature of the surface, so it so, uh, will probably tell you. Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Planet is the hottest. Venus, 480 degrees. Okay, Venus. So is it what we expect? I mean, I would say no, because it's not the closest planet to the sun. So Venus, it is not the closest planet to the sun, but it's thick clouds keep in the heat. Okay, so it's a green, it's like a greenhouse effect. It is a greenhouse effect, it's like a more extreme one. So which planet has a day longer than its year? Okay, so which planet has a day longer than its year? So time to go on the sun, time for axis in hours, so let's have a look. Got Earth, well, no, that's not true. Jupiter, time to go on the sun, 12 years, rotation is axis, 9.8, so less than a day, it's not that one. Mars, 687 for a year, 25 is pretty similar to Earth. Nope. Mercury, 88 days, 
1,400 hours. So we could work that out. Could be a bit of working out going on calculator. So 1,400 divided by 24, 58. Okay, so 58 days, but it's years. So that's not, it's not Mercury. Neptune, 165 years, 16 hours. It's definitely not that one. Pluto, well, when it was included, but 248 years, 150 hours, no. Nope. Saturn, 29 years to go around the sun. Rotation, 10.2, no. Nope. Uranus, 20, so 84 years to go around the sun. Um, and it's time for rotation, it's axis 17, no. Nope. So uh, Venus is 225 days, 5,800. Ah, Venus, okay, so 5,800 divided by um, 24, 241, that's bigger than 225, so it's Venus. Again, <laughs> Venus is, it doesn't often get that much attention, does it? Venus has a day that is longer than its year. Okay, it takes longer to rotate about its axis once. Okay, some scientists think that the oceans on earlier were formed by comets. Why do you think this was? So remember what comets are made of. So comets are mainly made, mainly, mainly, made of ice. Um, so um, comets, Could have collided with collided hit with the early Earth and brought water. Okay, so they could have done that. And lastly, which planet rotates the fastest? So we just look for the lowest number, Jupiter, nine point eight. Okay, so Jupiter, it rotates in 9.8 hours. They're fast enough. Okay, so yeah, so, so this is just generally about the structure of the heliocentric geocentric model, very important too. Yeah, these are important to concentrate on. You don't need to remember anything to do with the years or anything like that, because they'll tell you in the exam, you have to memorize it. The only thing you have to memorize, obviously, is the Earth. Is it's rotation 24 hours and it's year it's 365 days, but you probably know that. Um, all the other planets will be given the information, so don't worry about remembering them. Um, you just have to read it from a table like that, but you have to make some kind of, well, yeah, it might do a calculation up with Venus, okay, about how many days does it take? I like think it's due now and things like that. But thank you for listening to the video. Um, enjoyed making this and thank you.